one hour. So we'll try to keep it um, um, to, to time as much as possible. So um, for participants, um, I just, okay. Um, so first, um, confirming who's here from the cruise team. So I see Alan from Afonic, Andre from Rive, um, Pregnant from AP Nick, Dr. Govin from AP Nick, um, Michael from Aaron, Narani from Ripe. And so, the, so these are the people that I see. Um, uh, and um, if there's anybody else that I haven't called the name, but who are at the call, please let me know. And of course, we have um, Herman and um, I think there was somebody from Mac who may be supporting us in our secretariat. So, um, let's, Izumi, um, Izumi, yes. Izumi, Dr. Govind here. We have Mr. K.B. Narayanan from Nixi. Okay, uh, great to have observers. Observers are welcome. So, um, thank you for uh, letting us know about this. Yeah, um, yeah noted. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, so let's go through the agenda for today. So um, in addition to the regular agenda, um, which is one and two, um, what we'd like to discuss today is that we already started receiving um, a couple of comments on, on the global, um, sorry, um, my, I missed up the order. So um, agenda item number three is um, first confirming pending issues. I think there were a couple of points that was raised when we were actually um, giving feedback about the, the second draft that we felt that we don't have enough time to incorporate uh, for this version, which were mainly uh, very, very editorial in nature and it doesn't change the contents of um, our proposal at all. So let's confirm what they are and then um, what we're going to do about it. Are we going to um, um, publish another editorial version uh, before the final draft or... Um, no. Uh, or are we, are we going to incorporate them in the final draft? So that's something that I would like to discuss in agenda item number three. And then agenda item number four is um, confirm the comments received both in the regional list that you are involved as well as the, um, the global list that's facilitated by the NRO. And then, um, Dr. Dr. Govin, I believe um, I, it would be helpful if you could mute your uh, microphone. Um, thank you. And um, and then let's go to agenda item number five, uh, which is to um, confirm uh, per each of the issues that's being raised on the crisp team position on this. And then this whole list might just uh, put you off a little bit. But actually, we reached a general agreement on many of the issues on the mailing list already. So, um, so Marani says that she's lost audio. Um, so, oh, back, great. Um, that's good to know, Narani, that you're back. So, um, so that's what I'd like to go through in agenda item number five. And then um, number six is, if we are short of time, we don't have to, um, it's not a must to do it today, but preparation for the final draft. So um, let's confirm who's going to do um, what for each section in terms of uh, reflecting texts, and then um, timeline for each steps of the um, the preparation phases of a draft and things like this. And then um, um, agenda item number seven is the next meeting. But in addition to uh, checking the um, the very next meeting, I'd also like to confirm the overall schedule of our um, Chris team course. Because I suspect that um, we, we may want to add some of the calls that is currently not on the agenda, I mean, not, not in the, our schedule. So um, is there anything else that you would like to discuss um, today that is not on the agenda listed here? Um, noted, Narani. I'm sorry about this audio problem, and hopefully that would make things better. And um, so first, uh, let's go through the, um, the actions review, so agenda item number two. So uh, minutes of the, um, the we, we've had um, 
one meeting that is not numbered, uh, which was the emergency sort of meeting uh, held yesterday. And then there was also one held um, as the ninth meeting, which clashed with the ASO uh, meeting. So uh, my understanding is that we still haven't, um, uh, we don't have the, the minutes yet because uh, we, we haven't given in sufficient time for the NRO Secretariat to work on. So uh, unless her man has any clarifications to make, uh, that's the understanding that I have about the status of the minutes. And then um, I would like to go to agenda 2B, um, which is um, announcements made to relevant stakeholders. So in addition to the IANA um, global list um, facilitated by uh, NRO, I'd like to confirm if all the um, the, the announcement has been made uh, to forward it to all the regional lists. And then I think her man mentioned um, reaching out to NRO's, um, I don't know what exactly that stands for, communications group. And then, um, so maybe I'll first confirm the status of the regional list. Um, maybe perhaps some um, representatives from each region can simply type in whether you, you've, um, you've um, <coughs> actually forwarded uh, announcement to your regional list. And I think we can just uh, confirm instead of everybody speaking out, unless you have something that you want to particularly raise about this. So, um, thank you, Nurani, noted about the ripe community list. And then, um, so if there's anybody from Aaron, Lackmick, um AP Nick, on behalf of myself, if somebody could type, and then I don't see anybody from the Latinx region joining the call um, at the moment. Um, but so maybe we can uh, follow up if necessary later. Um, <coughs> and then um, Something um Epina community is done, Erin community is done. And then Herman, thank you also for sharing that NL communications group received the announcement. And as an update from my side, um I've shared this to the IETF uh, and the names community developing their respective proposals on the INS stewardship transition, as well as um to Paul Wilson and one of the ICG members, I um, actually communicated this to the ICG, not the draft itself, but our status of work, which I shared um, on the mailing list. And thank you, Alan. Um, so it has been sent to the AFRNIC list and AFNUC list as well, uh, so multiple lists um, in the AFRNIC region. Um, thank you very much. So that's wonderful. So all the necessary communication has been done, it seems. And then, um, so let's move on to agenda item number three, um, is to confirm pending issues. So um, I think um, there were a couple of points that we felt we wanted to incorporate in the draft, but we didn't this time. So the first point is um, LACNIC regional chart, regional process chart. So that's in section six. Um, and LACNIC has provided a diagram, but um, it was felt that it would be useful to have the text version. And um, I think this text version was um, ava available in earlier drafts, so um, I think there was a comment made on the main that it could be made uh, available. So I um, just want to double check if this, this is uh, reflected or not, or uh, this is something that we should do in the next draft. Um, so I'm not seeing anybody um, oh, on the, oh yes, I, I'm seeing somebody on the chat. Yes, we should send a text version. Yes, I agree. So um, Alan, uh, since um, you raised this uh, point, um, would you mind to uh, work on this uh, so that uh, we could have the text version? Uh, yes, sure, I can do that. Thank you, um, Alan. I can probably just cut and paste from the PDF into a text file. Okay, thank you. I'll work on that in the next hour. Oh, well, thank the next you. Hour after the meeting ends. 
Great, thank you. And then uh, talking about the text version reminded me, I think there was a request from um, Andrew Dell to send the text version for the second uh, draft. So um, I will do that as soon as uh, we're done with the meeting. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll do this. And then, um, well, I think 3B is quite a minor issue that I raised that I don't feel too, too strongly about is the, um, in section 3, I think there are four elements of the proposal that's being listed. And I felt that the numbering format that's listed in um, section 3A, listing each element of the proposal, and then the title um, of each um, paragraph that's describing the each element of the proposal should be consistent. And um, well, I'm actually okay with the current uh, format as long as it's clear that uh, w which element of the proposal that uh, we're talking about, unless um, somebody feels differently about it. So I'm not saying anything in the chat. Um, so let's go to 3C. Uh, possibility of reformatting section three. And I actually sent the draft about um, one or two hours ago on the mailing list. And uh, thank you, Andre, for expressing support for this. So, um, so the basic idea is that um, I, I want to be very clear um, that people can capture what are the four proposal elements that we're proposing. And then I thought that um, in the second version, because we added some of the details of each of the individual elements of the proposal, it made it a little bit vague on um, what exactly it is the, the essence of what we're proposing. So that's what I was um, trying to address in the text that I sent. So I made three changes. One is just simply changing a paragraph that's included in the SLA into uh, 3A, which uh, is covering the whole proposal because it's um, explaining the basic concept about uh, our relationship with other functions. And then I, I, the other two points is um, really uh, minor, but I felt it's important in um, making our proposal clear. Is we, we actually say in very early um, part of the paragraph that uh, we are proposing to develop uh, an SLA uh, between RIRs and, um, and the ICANN instead of uh, mentioning this later. And then lastly, um, the part about, all the part that lists the SLA um, items and its principles, I thought we should um, indent, indent, uh, have to give lower indent so that uh, it's, you can visually see it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit different from the, the essential, the overview part of the proposal. So uh, please take a look and um, I'd like to confirm if anybody have any comments at this stage, but I do also um, like to give some um, time for people to comment uh, online as well. So it's not that we, we have to, you know, or make decision at this moment. So uh, I'm not seeing any comments on the chat. So um, please, um, I think it would be helpful if you could uh, give your feedback about this on the mailing list, um, if you have any comments. And then, um, so let's go to 3D. So this is um, PDF, providing PDF version of the issues list, which Nurani has uh, mentioned. Um, and I ag agree with this suggestion. We, we shouldn't, uh, we should uh, provide in a format that accommodates uh, various multiple environments, which we do for our actual proposal draft. So I think we want to make this consistent uh, for the issues list as well. Uh, so let's first confirm if anybody have any comments about this. I'm not seeing any hand or um, uh, people speaking out. So, uh, hand, Herman, please. Hi, uh, Isumi. Uh, sorry for not answering this before in the, in, in the list, uh, just catching up with the last six hours of email, uh, emails. But uh, I just uploaded the uh, PDF version that uh, Nurani prepared. Um, so that version is now uh, in the in the website in case you want to verify that. 
Thank you very much. So helpful that you already addressed it. Um, thank you, Haman. And so as an additional point that I'd like to confirm with you is that uh, we are likely to um, update this uh, list. Um, we're definitely going to um, um, develop the same list uh, um, when we actually uh, publish our final version, uh, as well as we might do an update in between as well. So I wonder if you would be able to do the um, um, give the PDF version every time we, we post this on the NR website. Amen. Um, yes, yes. I uh, I would need to check how I can do that uh, from an Excel file, but uh, I'm sure it is it should be an, an easy task. Otherwise, I can ask Nurani for help to to understand how she how she did it. Uh, but uh, in, in any case, no worries. Uh, we, I can take that uh, as part of the uh, task uh, as, uh, as soon the, um, the the file is is uh, is published. Thank you so much, Raman. And uh, I see Nurani uh, expressing her appreciation. Yes, uh, indeed. Very. Um, thank you very much. Um, and then. Um, it seems that today I have some problems showing the chat and this uh, participant list uh, at the same time. But um, anyways, um, um, and so let's move. So this is done and agreed for 3D. So let's move to 3E, which is uh, crisp website improvements. Um, so this is another area that uh, we would very much be interested to hear. Um, well, first. Uh, Christine's uh, feedback, whether this is a good idea. And then also, um, I, I'm aware of the resources of the NL Secretariat, so I would certainly like to hear your um, comment on her man as well. So first, uh, from the Christine members, um, um, well, um, maybe perhaps Nurani can give a, a brief overview and the motivation behind it, and then um, have Christine members um, express their comments as necessary. Thanks, Izumi. Um, well, I, I, um, I guess what triggered it was simply that that I got a lot of questions from people who wanted to comment and said, "Where do I do that? And how? And and etc." And uh, I guess also after having submitted the final response, as, as, uh, the final draft, I had a look at the website to make sure that everything was clear. And I just find that we've added sort of text uh, incrementally to to the site, and uh, maybe we need to take a look at it and and um, see how we can make this uh, page as legible as possible. At the moment, when you go in, you see that. You, you see an introduction, then you see the charter, and then you see the members, and you sort of have to scroll down quite far to, to find the latest version. I think the absolute main thing that should stand out is, of course, the latest version. And then there need to be clear instructions on, on where to get it, what the various um, documents are, like the red line version, the clean line version, the summary discussion uh, uh, document, and how to provide your input and then I also think it's really important that it says what the next steps are, that they know that the deadline for um, uh, for providing input is uh, the 12th, especially since it's such a tight deadline, and then what will happen afterwards as well. Uh, for two reasons, reasons of clarity, that we really want people to read the document and provide their support if they feel they want to support it uh, and provide uh, final improvements to it. And the uh, second reason is I really think that it's important that this uh, page shows uh, our work uh, and shows it in a transparent way. So I'm happy to hear any other suggestions or, or to discuss it. I'm not a uh, web usability expert, so these are just the first uh, sort of observations I made. Thank you, Narani, and I'm seeing a hand from Alan. Right. Uh, thank you. I, I support what Nurani said. I, I think there's too much on this page. Um, when I go to the, the CRISP website, um, there's an introduction, there's the charter, there's the list of members, there's a detailed list of meetings. Um, I think most of those elements could be moved to subsidiary pages and uh, the, the landing page could be just a brief summary of the 
of the main idea behind CRISP and then links to all these other pages. So, you know, if you want to read the chart, you might have to click something to go to a sub page. And if you want the list of members, you might have to click something to go to a sub page. But at the front page should should describe at a high level what CRISP is, what the current point uh, well, the current status is and, and where we are in our timeline and how to give input and how to get the latest version of all the documents. So I, I think that's pretty much in agreement with what Nurani said. Excellent points, Alan. And yes, I, I think we are all in agreement and I have also expressed my uh, support for all the points that Nurani has raised. So um, now I'd like to confirm with her command um, regarding the resources and whether you need um, any additional clarifications from us to get your work done if it can be accommodated. Um, it's to me, uh, I think uh, recently behind, I, uh, I, think I agree as well. I think uh, there are good changes to, to implement. I think uh, are, are easy, easy tasks to do, relatively easy tasks. So I will start to make the changes uh, right now based on uh, Nurani, your inputs in the many list and Alan. And, um, and I would let you know when I have um, uh, a new version of the, of the Chris page. Uh, I think that will be in the coming one, two hours. Uh, and I would appreciate the feedback uh, once you see a, a new version based on your inputs. But uh, no problem, no problem with implementing those, those, those suggestions. Excellent, Herman. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate your support for this. And um, so I would uh, um, encourage Chris team members to give input um, once her man has uh, made revision to the web page. Wonderful. So um, let's go to uh, action, uh, not not action, um, item number four is confirmed comments received. So I think this is a, just uh, going through briefly. Um, so we, I've listed all the comments received on our 5A, which I believe I did, but um, I'd like to confirm if there's anything anything else notable. And then also, um, if there's any um, comments that you received um, in your regional list, uh, please let us know. So if there's no comments received, you don't have to comment. Um, simply expressing on the chat would be sufficient. So thank you, Alan. No comments received on the um, on the. Afrenic regional list, um, and um, no comments on the right list. And um, so, have seen people from yeah, so people from the right region speaking up up on the global list. So wonderful, yes, I, I've, I've noticed that as well. So it's the excellent um, encouragement from Chris team from the right region. And um, so in, in terms of from um, APNIC, it's similar. So I, I, uh, we have Pinder Wong, uh, who's from the APNIC region, commenting on the global list. And he did uh, make one point about a web link which doesn't work. Um, he, he actually communicated with me individually. So um, I'll share this on the list um, so that uh, when um, we, we do the when we incorporate all the comments that this part is addressed. Um, and then I did uh, <coughs> individually get a contact set from um, me and Nick that they're interested in commenting. So we may be expecting to uh, receive some feedback from Vietnam. So if there's no other um, updates from other regions, then um, let's go into um, covering the list of issues that's being um, raised on the global list. So um, the list uh, from 5A to 5E, these are all the points that are raised by Richard Hill which I shared on the mailing list. So um, to very quickly go through, um, so A is 
more details of dispute resolution should be described and added um, in our draft. That's the first suggestion for 5A. And then B is um, he observes a very low um, input in RIR process. So this should be reflected in section six, and he thinks that the process itself is bottom up, up, bottom up. but the fact that we're having very low input um, doesn't make our, our proposal uh, bottom up. That that seems to be his observation, and he he's re he's recommending that we actually reflect this situation in section six, and then um, five C is. Um, why we haven't uh, mentioned an option of having NRO as an operator of the IANA number resource uh, function, uh, and we're, why are we simply sticking to um, ICANN? And his reasoning behind that was that there was uh, some support expressed uh, in some regions discussions uh, about this, so it's uh, something wor uh, which is worth mentioning uh, and describing in a proposal. And then 5D is uh, change in um, ICANN bylaws for global PDP. Uh, so whether ICANN bylaws should be reviewed so that uh, we we have um, a stronger control in uh, global PDP. And then E is. Um, well, he doesn't think that uh, we are we have sufficient um, elements. We, we meet the criteria um, to submit the proposal until the SLA text itself is actually incorporated in our um, in our proposal. Well, at least as annex. So um, this this is all the points that he's listed, and um, so. Uh, and then, um, just to add my general observation, so um, Nurani, Alan, and Andre has, uh, and Nwandera uh, has given input on this, and I see of the, uh, agreement among um, Nurani, Alan, Andre, and also myself on the on the direction of each of the points. So, um, so that that's an observation, and then so let's uh, confirm our position for each of the points. So for Firstly, for five. Oh, thank you, Paul, for expressing that uh, you agree with our direction here. Great. And uh, going back to the earlier point, um, thank you, Andre, for um, confirming there's no com comments in the Lacanic region uh, list um, for our second proposal. Thank you. So, um, so, um, so for five A. Our proposed suggestion is that we actually simply list our very like a high level our principles that we think is important. So it's, it's, it has to be like an uh, impartial place uh, for all the stakeholders, and it should be in a single location. Things, things like that that Alan has listed as an example. So, firstly, uh, do we all agree that um, it's worth um, adding some high-level principles that we think is important um, as a part of dispute resolution? Anybody? Uh, who disagrees with this? So I'm not seeing any comments or anyone wanting to speak. So um, I think there's an agreement. Hand, Andre, please. Oh, it's rather a question. I, I probably a bit outdated. What kind of high-level principles on dispute resolution we're talking about? Could could someone summarize them, please? Uh, yes. Um, I think it's uh, listed in Alan's email. Um, Alan, I wonder if are you would you be able to um, uh, copy and paste uh, on the chat over here so that people are able to see? I uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't cut and paste into the chat. It's on a different laptop. I see. Um, okay. But I can tell you that the suggestion in my email was really just I, I copied some text that John Curran had mentioned in the IANA transfer mailing list. Um, it was a message in which he said something like uh, his memory of the reason why Bermuda was chosen was because of a few things, which I can't remember, but I could look up. And um, the, those points seem to me to be a good start 
at a list of high-level principles. So my suggestion is that we could incorporate such high-level principles into our proposal, but not go into detail. So for example, I think we should not say what jurisdiction should be chosen, but we should say that the jurisdiction should um, have a reputation for being good at this kind of thing. Um, I'm not ready to propose text, but that's, that's just the rough idea. I guess my point, if, if, if it doesn't change the level of the principle that we already include in, in our proposal, then I guess I'm fine. I, I, I would need to look at the final text, but I think it's fine. Thank you, um, okay. and uh, thank you very much, Michael, for posting this uh, text uh, referenced um, um, on the chat. So um, I, I don't need our uh, people to um, you know, make the final decision at this stage, but I think if you briefly take a look, it gives you a rough idea on um, what this is about. So it should be a neutral venue, totally independent of all the parties, and allow a single location for arbitration of all disputes, um, rather than needing to select a menu based on parties involved. Make use of well understood international chamber of commerce rule, has a um, court system of recognized integrity with international commercial arbitrations, generally free of court, court intervention. So I think that's, that's what's listed. Uh, Izumi, the Govind here. Yes, Dr. Govind, please. Uh, this is regarding the jurisdiction, the Senate text proposal and how the arbitration cases which are in various geographies of the world. So how it is going to be included in the text of the SLA? Uh, so are you saying that um, your question is, you don't have any questions about these principles that I've just read out, but you are wondering what exactly the text will be like in the SLA itself. Um, is that your question, Dr. Govan? Yeah. Um, so, um, first, um, I think we have agreed as Christine that um, defining the actual SLA document itself is out of scope of our work. This is something to be done and responsible by the RIRs because they are the stakeholders in this. They're the ones who exchange um, the contract with uh, ICANN. So what we do as Christine is we actually document the high-level principles. These are the kind of conditions that we want to be included in the SLA, which you have seen in our second draft, um, you know, each of the different um, elements of the things that we want to be included in the SLA. And then what we're discussing here now is uh, whether we would um, in incorporate similar um, high-level principles along the same lines um, with other items um, that we've listed in SLA for the dispute resolution as well. And you can see the actual text. And although there's no very specific condition listed here at this stage, there's a principle that says a natural venue that should be totally independent of all the parties. Um, so that's the idea. Okay. Thanks. So oh, thank you. After it will be fine. So thank you for this uh, question, Dr. Govin. And I'm, um, I think I heard something, but I, I wonder if this was a team member wanting to speak or just uh, a sound leaking. Okay, um, it, it doesn't seem to be the team member. So if, um, So Andre's comment is just do not see a real reason to make this principle more heavy than other principles we include. And uh, this agreement uh, from Paul Randick um, about this. So um, I think we want to, con uh, I think it's a point that we definitely want to um, maybe uh, go back to um, Richard on why he, he thinks that this is 
important. Um, and Andre, I think I'm not 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 totally against clarification of this uh, principle if that's that's appropriate. If people think that that's a good thing, I just don't. Uh, it seems a bit weird if we include the text that was cut and pasted in the uh, chat 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 window. If that is included as a text of this principle, that would be kind of making this principle disproportionately more detailed than the other principles that we include, and that sounds uh, um, slightly unreasonable to me. Yes, understood. And this agreement um, from Craig and um, Alan as well. So. Um, so maybe um, our current feeling is that we we um, we actually go back to Richard, explaining that um, this would actually um, make the um, the princi um, the principles listed re related to dispute resolution much more detailed than um, other elements of the SLA and. Um, so, and then we might want to be able to explain why this would not cause a, a concern or problem for us. So, um, so is, is the reasoning is that we feel that there's actually already enough um, principle um, properly described in our current document related to dispute resolution. Is that how we would um, respond? I see Alan's hand. Uh, thanks, Izumi. Um, I think this is more a general comment on the the SLA and the contract rather than focused particularly on this clause. Um, you know, perhaps we should say something about uh, where it says it's expected that RIR staff will draft the specific language. Um, Perhaps somewhere around there, we could say that we expect them to follow a, a, an open process, consulting with the community, getting consensus from the community before things are implemented. And uh, maybe if we said that, it would uh, be enough to address the comments about uh, there not being enough detail in this document. If we promise people that there'll be more detail later and that they'll have a chance to, uh, to build consensus later. Thank you, Alan, for bringing this point. And I think this was actually, I, I, I'm personally fine with this, um, with, with your suggestion, Alan. And I think this was the point that we actually discussed in um, the, um, the ninth Chris team call. Um, uh, and we might not want to mention something like um, we, we cannot do because it does not um, really, we were not in a position to tell um, RIRs, what to do, and then so even writing this, it doesn't really um, add any uh, real solution to the problem. So I see um, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zimi. Yeah, I think my my main view on on all all this section and all those principles is that we are really not a legal team, right? And that's not a task. So when when it goes into kind of you know normal legal practices of international law, international contracts. I think we can trust our legal teams, RIR legal teams, to do that. There is no need to specifically mention this in this proposal. If there is something specific which is not part of the common practice, that's what we need to communicate, community input, and inject this as a principle. That was my general approach, and therefore I think disputes, yes, of course, that's, that's no different in, in disputes between RIRs and ICANN as in any other international context. So I don't think uh, we really need such detail in this in this in this case. That's an excellent uh, summary, and I think it it sounds um, convincing. And um, so I, I very much support this um, um, this um, um, way of thinking. Um, is there anybody else um, who have comments related to this? So um, I'd like to reconfirm on Alan's point. Um, so so the um, 
May I, would it be a fair interpretation that we actually agreed on the ninth call that we were actually not in a position to um, tell RIR staff what to do and um, um, yes. Um, thank you, Paul, for um, agreeing this line of thinking, uh, which I believe is referring to Andre's comment. And um, yes, indeed, we're in heated agreement, Craig. So, um, so my current um, suggestion is that we, we don't mention anything um, about RIRs doing um, open um, communications and things like that, because that, that was what was uh, agreed in the ninth meeting. Um, so that's my understanding. But Alan, if you have any further comments related to this, um, I'd be interested to hear. Uh, okay, I, I'm fine with not changing the text. I think uh, we have enough work to do already without having to, to put more things into the document. Um, but perhaps in our response to the community, when we explain why we haven't changed the text, we can say things like, uh, we trust the RIR staff to do the right thing. We can't tell them what to do, but we fully expect that they will consult the community uh, when that's appropriate. Um, yes, I, I think that's a good suggestion, and we can also add to add Andrew's point that if it's something that's not irregular, you know, then we can expect RIR staff to reflect it. So, um, with, so if there's no other um, comments about this, then um, I'd like to move to another um, item. But I note that Andre has to leave in 50 minutes or so. So if Andre, um, if there's any points that you would like to particularly make a point and a comment, then maybe we can cover that part of the agenda. Oh, thank you, Zumi. Uh, I think I can I, I can stay until we cover the whole fifth issue. But if if uh, since you asked, I think uh, I have some comments that I didn't supply on the mailing list with regards to uh, Richard's comments about the bylaws and his justification. Um, I just wanted to make uh, more clear that I'm not sure he is absolutely correct. If you look at the IANA contract, it only uh, specifies uh, separation of policy development and operational roles for the designated IANA function staff members. So I think it, it has very narrow scope. It doesn't uh, extend to the whole ICANN stuff. So I'm not sure his point is correct. And therefore, I think our point is that there is separation and there is nothing for this Chris team to do uh, is absolutely correct. Well, thank you, Andre, for uh, highlighting this point that um, maybe perhaps Richard was, uh, Richard's interpretation was uh, uh, wider than uh, it really is, uh, should be in reality. So um, I think Andre has sent the, the actual text, separation of policy development and operational roles. And so your interpretation is uh, related to the IANA function itself, and it doesn't uh, cover the wider ICANN staff. So um, that, that's your observation, Andre. That's how I understood your uh, comment and observation. So correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, that, uh, th this issue, if there is an issue, of course, this issue belongs to a uh, uh, policy development, global policy development process, and therefore any changes should be considered using another process as we used to do in our communities. Yes, um, yes. Thank you for clarifying this point. And I think that's what we've been agreeing in uh, multiple meetings. Um, Within the Chris team, so and I think people are agreeing with this um, with this interpretation. So and I did actually um, made a, a comment. I, I actually replied back to uh, Richard about this point. And so if there's anything else that you feel that um, we should express um, to the global um, list um, related to this particular point 5D then um, we can do this. But um, for example, Andre, if you feel that we should actually, in addition, um, make this point, then we can uh, certainly consider this. Um, but
do not see the need. Okay, great. So I think we've covered 5D, and then we've covered uh, 5A as well. Um, so the conclusion for 5A is that um, these are too detailed um, compared to other elements of the proposal. So uh, we want to cover. Um, can somebody mute, please? Um, I'll still try to talk, but um, I, I think um, muting would be very helpful. Oh, thank you. And so for, um, the conclusion for 5A is that um, it's, uh, it's a little bit too detailed to cover only the dispute resolution part. And um, so, um, and then we, we think that we can trust the RIR staff to um, do the work. And then also um, Andre's point that unless there's something that is a bit irregular that we should highlight, um, we can actually uh, leave it to RIR's legal staff that who has the experience. So I think that's the, um, that's our basic position. So we would not change the text, and, and we just explained this point to Richard. And then, uh, so let's move to 5B. Um, this is about um, his observation on low input in RIA process, section uh, 6. I recall uh, Nurani has made a point about this, and I think Alan's observation was uh, also very good. So um, if either of you want to make any comment about this, um, I'd welcome your comment. Uh, okay, this is Alan. Um, the comment that I made in the CRISP internal mailing list was that, uh, in my opinion, the, the participation from the Afrinic region has been more or less on a par with what we see in discussions of uh, non-controversial regional policies. Uh, there's been not much participation on the mailing list. There have been postings from a few people, um, and there was quite a lively discussion at the face-to-face -face meeting. And um, you know, while that might not be a lot compared with what happens in some other communities, it's more or less normal for the Afrinic community. So I don't see a problem here with the amount of participation. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Narani, do you want to um, share any of the observation that you made? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not going to repeat what I said on, on the list, but that's uh, my interpretation of it. I, I'm, I'm sure also that the timing of this happening over Christmas uh, in this, uh, at the end of the year probably contributed to to uh, to there not being as high amount of discussion or uh, vivid discussion as I had hoped. But then again, I agree this is at the end of the process, and I think um, if this had been the start of the process, I think we should have been more concerned. And then I just want to to. Uh, make one point about I did try when I wrote the part about community processes I did try to say that um, and I can't uh, find the text that text now but basically that most of the discussions happen in each uh, region rather than um, on the global list and that that's really how um, these sort of bottom-up processes work I can try to find that text uh, but I was trying to find a way of describing that. But that's my interpretation. Um, I don't know if others have other comments. Thank you, Nurani and Paul. Uh, thanks very much, Izumi. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I very much disagree with this point because I think we've been active for quite a number of months in various uh, fora. Uh, not only even in our own, for instance, ripe community process, but at every other meeting or every opportunity we had where we were speaking at different events or pulling uh, the technical community uh, from the ripe region together, uh, we made very big points of, of actually talking about this whole IANA stewardship transition. And I think that we received very clear direction from our communities and even from those that were less understanding of maybe the process, I think they showed very much support in RIPE NCC and those active in the RIPE community to go forward with this process. So 
I, I very much agree with Narani here that, that this is, it, it has happened probably regionally and you maybe haven't seen it happening on a global list, but that's how we operate as, as RIR communities. And actually that's the robustness of, of this system. So I don't see this as, as something that has been uh, uh, any kind of a fault or, or, or any kind of an error here. Um, I think we have received the uh, kind of information we needed and the amount of information and support, uh, I can speak here from the right community perspective, that we needed to actually walk into this uh, and, 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 and support the principles from our community. Um, and let's be realistic here. I think that once people have, have assigned those CRISP members uh, from the community, which of course we have Narani and Andre here, I think that, that, the, that the way the right community functions is that they have full support that these folks that were chosen from the community would defend their principles. So I think this is being done, and I think that they are defending the whole bottom-up system and the principles they were given. So I, I, think, I think we can substantiate this. Thank you, Paul, and also Nurani for, um, for this point. And so the idea is that we actually um, start from the regional process. And I think Paul has uh, made a very good point that from the very fact that uh, they have elected the Christian representatives, they actually, uh, the basic position is support, and they may not explicitly say, yes, we support, uh, but uh, um, it, it, it is actually a sign that uh, they give trust in our work. So I think that's, that's a good point to make. And um, I think, well, um, he, his point was that there's a low, very low level of input in some of the RIR regions, or even though um, some RIRs um, try to uh, receive input from the community, and this should be described in section uh, six. And I know and acknowledge that this wasn't the case in the right region, and uh, Alan has also shared that this wasn't the case in the Afrinic region. And uh, but uh, I think in terms of AP inclusion, um, Richard uh, Rich, Richard's observation is uh, actually correct. Uh, so please uh, correct me, uh, Craig and Dr. Uh, Govin, if my observation is wrong. But it's it's true that we didn't receive that many opinions um, from our community. But having said that, it doesn't um, lead to saying that our um, a proposal is actually not supported because if people have concerns, people would actually express it um, on, 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 at the meeting or on the mailing list, and people are quiet, so it's uh, they're not objecting to it. And I think um, it's it feels a little bit far just the whole concept, and people generally are happy with um, with the current situation, and they don't see direct uh, involvement um, on the IANA. Um, issue, the NTIA issue. So that, that's, that's the situation in the APNIC region. Uh, so I see hand from Andre. I think to be fair to Richard, I think he didn't imply that there is no support for the community. I think his point that we need to maybe uh, highlight something in the uh, description of the process. And I think if just for a casual reader, it seems like, yes, there was low input, uh, maybe we should highlight exactly what we just said on this in this discussion uh, in this section, focusing that IANA transfer uh, mailing the discussion was just the end of the process. It was uh, uncontroversial, uh, and bulk of the inputs were already collected through the regional processes. Maybe highlight this, make it more clear, and uh, give it more weight. Will address Richard's point. Um, okay, um, a good suggestion. I, I'm happy with this a approach, but I just want to um, clarify whether Richard's point was pointing out low traffic uh, on the global list or uh, low traffic in each of the RIR regions uh, list. So, if it's a, uh, if he's simply referring to our um, to the global um, discussions, I think I, I very much agree um, highlighting this point. Um, I actually don't have uh, access to my uh, work email, so um, uh, 
Thank you. Uh, so Andre has made some points. In addition, the language needs to be tweaked a bit. Well, RIR process is indeed bottom-up. There wasn't much bottom-up for uh, this process. Uh, so this is uh, uh, Andre actually listing uh, what Richard said. So people maybe can take a look at this. Yes, I think he, he so my interpretation is he's talking about the RIR process, not the global process. So I, I, I take note that um, there's active discussions in RIPE and um, and Afrinic region, and I don't know about um, Aaron and Lacanic region, but um, so I, I think he, he maybe he was observing Apinic region situation and feel, felt that uh, uh, this uh, he we, he wanted us to actually describe that there was no much input. To, um, um, provided in in the AP equation. Well, I don't see much point, why much reason why we have to um, actually describe and highlight this, but that that seems to be the point that he's making. Just to clarify, which is point. So, um, as, as a way um, of moving forward, um, I'm. Actually, personally, okay to describe this fact for APNIC region that there's no much uh, feedback uh, or active discussions uh, on the mailing list, um, but it gives the reason why there wasn't that many feedback, and we can actually reflect this uh, explanation in in the text. Uh, if um, Craig and Dr. Govin thinks that um, this is okay. Um, sorry, Azumi, I see hands from Nurani and Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Thank you, um, Alan. So, um, Nurani, please. Thanks, Alan and Azumi. Um, I, I, um, I actually, well, two points. I, I think that, um, I think, I don't think that Richard Hill is an active participant in the various um, communities or that he, I haven't seen him on the various in various regional discussions, so I think maybe I shouldn't uh, assume things here, but but I think that he's referring to to sort of the global list and at the end of the process. I think that Andre actually summarised it really well in that, um, and I've probably forgotten your points now, but that um, this is really the end of the process, uh, and that. Um, each community uh, had their discussions early and then they entrusted the, the CRISP uh, representatives to uh, represent them. And to be honest, I actually think it would have been, you could turn it around and say that a, it would have been a sign of uh, the process not being bottom up if we, in the very last phase of this, uh, would have received lots of feedback. Uh, lots of uh, conflicting feedback on the global list. I think that would have been a sign that the regional uh, representatives had not done their work um, in consulting their communities. So, um, I, if we want to say anything, I mean, I think it's fair to say that we've worked with a very aggressive timeline. I think that's something we could say. But um, I don't think that um, that we should. I don't. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not going to waffle. I don't agree with this one. I think that Andre's uh, way of summarising it was was a good response. Thank you, Nurani. And um, I'm still not sure if we can simply assume Richard Hill is uh, referring to the or global because he was actually posting on the AP and list. Uh, but um, I, I'd like to go to Paul, and then after Paul or Craig. Yeah, I, I think all the points have been made made here, Azumi. I just, if I if I look at the community, in, in I can speak here for the Ripe community. Um, they've made their principles very clear. They actually said what they wanted to have carried out, and like I said before, they elected individuals to represent them inside of this this team. I can tell you that if Andre and Narani. Uh, went back to our community and said, 
the principles that we had talked about are not in this proposal and we don't know where this is going, our community would raise its head very quickly. And I think the same could go for the other RIRs. I think that the process seems to be moving. I think people have made things very clear. Let's be realistic. This does not affect people's day-to-day -day businesses. I think the community and the members of the RIPE NCC, I can speak for here, the membership and the community here have seen this, they've commented on it, they want it to go forward. If there was any red flags raised, I think you would see the community participation going through. This hasn't been the case. So I think that what we've been reporting is, yes, we're finding agreement, yes, we're finding consensus, and everybody's principles seems to be, uh, seem to be incorporated into the document. So I don't think there's anything yes. strange okay. about Thank this you, at Paul. all. Thank you, Paul. I think that really um, explains um, the situation very well. I, I very much agree with your observation. If people have issues, people are going to like uh, definitely raise a flag. And it was being communicating on the regional list as well. So I think that's a very good point to make. And so um, I have Craig and um, Andres. So if you have anything new to add from what we've raised, um, I'd, I'd very much appreciate to hear from both of you. Hi, Zumi. Hi, everyone. I don't really have anything anything new to add, really, just to echo what everyone has said. Um, at the APNIC region, we've been talking about this an awful long time, and what we're proposing um, is not that new and not that, and, you know, we haven't, what we're proposing is not that different to what we've, you know, put to our community. Um, at the web, so at APNIC region, Izumi, Dr. Gobin and I uh, held a WebEx uh, community briefing last week, and I think there were some 15 or 20 people on the line from, you know, India, Pakistan, China, Japan, um, Vietnam, you know, the whole region. Um, and we actually had on the chat room quite overwhelming support for what we're doing. Um, so just because um, the mailing list is quiet over a one week period, I don't think you can measure that as against, um, you know, a one whole year of engagement. So, um, so my my suggestion is not to make any changes to the document. I think the section that uh, Narani had taken custody custody of that that described the regional processes and engagement is really quite sufficient and clear. And maybe all we need to do is uh, reply to Richard and say um, we don't agree with his observation for the reasons that we mentioned. Thank you, Craig. Um, yes, I agree with your point and also very much with the points that uh, Paul has made earlier. And thank you also for highlighting about the WebEx session. I think that, that's a, another good point. So, um, Andres, um, please. Uh, thank you, Isumi, and hello to all. Uh, from my side, I just wanted to say something, uh, describe the, the, the panorama similar uh, on what they did, uh, Paul and, and Craig, for their regions. Uh, the Lightning region also was discussing this uh, for a long time uh, now, uh, the whole 2004 year, and we also want to know that, want, want to say that uh, there was, it, despite there was um, some particular proposal from our community, this community input was, uh, has its legitimacy and has been uh, followed up by the Chris members from the Lightning region. So they have the support, especially the two members from the community, and they have been uh, following the discussion in the, in the community, especially for the, the leadership group that was created, and they had been discussing through the proposals during the discussion of the, of the Chris team. So the, the situation is similar to the rest of the areas, and we have no red, red lights, and this is not because we don't have participation or because we don't have discussion. It's because they are following uh, maybe not so closely their the process, but uh, we have the support, and that's my interpretation too. Thank you very much. So I think um, we're, we're all in agreement, and if uh, any issues, people are going to raise flag, and then they have trusted us to develop the, uh, this proposal. I think I think these are the key points that uh, we'd like to. Um, to communicate and no need to change the text. And I see uh, Michael agreeing that um, by the RIR with the respective communities, not solely measured by number of mailing lists, yes, totally, that's very true. And the community has been engaged and um, 
um, good to know that Michael agrees with some comments here. So people, yes, it's true. People don't uh, go ahead and say, yes, I agree. They, they don't actually say that unless they have concerns. So I think that's that's a very good point that you've raised, uh, Paul, and uh, also stated by Michael. So um, <coughs> so let's um, let's uh, move to 5E. So the conclusion of 5D, we're not going to change text, and we communicate, um, Richard, uh, this way, explaining this way. Um, that you know, just uh, seeing low inputs doesn't mean that uh, it, we haven't, we don't have the agreement, um, and it's implicit by our team support. And then go to 5E. So um, I think um, he, he was saying that um, it's a condition. We're not meeting a condition unless we have the exact SLA text. And I think um, Alan has made an excellent point about this. So, um, Alan, would you like to um, share your observation about this point? I uh, yes, sure. Um, so, I, I sent some email in which I quoted a few sentences from the RFP, and. Um, Right at the beginning, it says the responses should be as detailed as possible, and but it doesn't say how detailed that really means. And then in the section about uh, post-transition arrangements, it just asks us to to explain what changes we want. And so I think that our existing text in which we say there will be an SLA and a contract, and it should include the following um, considerations, um, I, I think that's sufficient. Um, I, I don't see any text in the RFP which would, um, which would mean that our response somehow um, is invalid because it doesn't have detailed legal text. Yeah, Alan. And so we can explain this, and in addition, of course, we can explain the basic principle that we agreed that this is, um, we, we just defined the basic high level um, principles in the SLA, and the rest is left up to our RIR staff, because this is actually not a part of our role to develop an SLA on behalf of the RIR. So I think um, on this point, we, we actually made an agreement in the past meeting and then think we can add um, Alan's point. And thank you, Andre, for uh, agreeing to this. So I think we're quite clear about our position on all the points that Richard has made, and it's quite consistent with what we discussed on um, on the mailing list. And then I think I realized we've, uh, sorry, we, we haven't covered 5C. So, uh, thank you, Andre, exactly, yes. Um, we haven't covered 5C, so uh, let's go to 5C. So, he's saying that there has been some support in some of the RIR region uh, for NRO being an, an operator, and then um, he's asking why Chris' team hasn't, uh, hasn't uh, discussed this option. And uh, I quite like Mwandu's point that, um, that that he made. That it, it may be possible that it was raised in some of the RIR region uh, region uh, discussions, but as conclusion um, of this region, I, I don't think there was um, the, the consensus was that uh, ICANN will serve as an as a continue as an operator. That was the consensus of all the R, um, RIR regions. And it would be kind of odd for us if we start considering about um, NRO as an option at this stage um, um, against the, uh, which is different from the consensus of each of the RIR regions. And um, so, so that's, an, that's my observation. And uh, another point that I would like to add is that it may be possible, that this may be a possibility, but um, at this point in time, if any of the RIA community feels in the future that they want to consider this option, we already have uh, listed in our SLA the possibility, the option of changing an IANA operator. So this could always be discussed in a, in a bottom-up way uh, among um, each of the RIA regions and then also uh, discussed globally if we seriously want to consider this option. 
So that's my observation about this point C. And um, I see hand from Andre. Thank you, Zumi. Uh, uh, I'm in full support with your your uh, uh, comments with regards to this issue. Um, I think what was the starting point for our work, at least from my perspective, is that community, global community consensus that the current system works well. It doesn't require substantive changes. I think if our starting point was different, we could have produced a different result, right? So our mandate was to amend the current system in a way that it, it is not constrained for future evolution, right, in the absence of NKA contract. I think the starting point, the system works well. It doesn't require dramatic changes. Thank you, Andrea. I really like the point that you made on the mailing. Don't break anything that works. Yes, I agree, and I'm seeing Paul agreeing with you as well. And um, I see Alan's point that uh, one response on the Affinix service that one could emphasize transferring all those functions to NRO. But don't read that as a suggestion we should. And uh, thank you, Alan, for clarifying that. Good one, Andre from Paul. Yes, I, I really agree, Andre. So I think well, we have an agreement on this as well. So, um, and I think the conclusion is that we, there's, it's not necessary to uh, incorporate any of the points that's being uh, raised by Richard, but uh, we should, uh, uh, you know, bring this point back to Richard so that. Um, he knows our conclusion. And um, uh, thank you, Craig, also for raising um, the results of Afrinic and Aaron Region Survey. Yes, um, um, noted. Andre, thank you so much um, for joining the call. It was really uh, good to have your input, Andre. And then, so uh, as the next step, um, what I'll do is um, I'll um, send a response to Richard. And um, I think if I, you know, draft and then uh, send to the first team, I think it, it takes time. So I would actually um, share, uh, send to Richard on what we think we've agreed. But could be possible. I may have missed some of the points that you felt was important. And you, you can actually add uh, to the mailing list um, what you felt was important, which you, you have expressed uh, at this call. So if you uh, bring up totally new points and issue, it may be a little bit uh, controversial, maybe. But um, if this is any of the points that we've discussed in the call, we it's, uh, it's assumed that we agreed about opposition. So, um, Please feel free to um, make your point and comment um, to Richard's point in addition to any of the points that I will be making. And uh, thank you, Nurani, for the comments that you just uh, responded to Alan's mail for the record. And the main point is stability, continuity, and uh, the proposal received that the NL should take over now. Yes, uh, exactly. So, um, so that's what uh, I suggested do for Rich or, or the points that Richard has raised from A to E. So I'm not seeing um, any additional hand up. And then at this point, we are actually uh, roughly 15 minutes over our initial time. So um, my preference is that uh, we want to cover all the points uh, listed um, here so that we are clear about what we do about the issues uh, raised, um, if everybody can stay. But, um, so maybe um, I suggest to have continue this call for another 15 minutes, uh, so um, 15 more minutes. So I don't know what exactly it's kind of um, 1430 UTC. Thank you. Um, Sure. Okay, let's go. And then, so um, the remaining ones, I think it's probably uh, easier, but um, one point that maybe uh, we, we need some discussion is the point that um, point number F, um, which uh, Pinder has raised. So he was um, asking a question um, that, okay to the point that uh, John Curran has made, that um, there, there has been no um, arbitration that, um, that actually we haven't had it. Um, somebody can mute, uh, please. Thank you. Um, so there has been, we haven't had any case of arbitration in our past experience. And then um, to this point, he was saying that um, it was just his question that 
um, well, if there's no any experience in arbitration, how can we sure that a uh, particular arbitration would uh, work? And it, it seems to be more of a question. And it didn't. He didn't say that we have to, you know, resolve this uh, issue um, or incorporate anything in the, you know, proposal. But he seemed to be quite um, curious to hear hear the answer. So. Um, well, so I'm not 100% sure if uh, this is the part that the uh, Chris team members should officially reply to, actually, but, um, but well, it's not good to ignore people's comments, actually. So, um, so um, any thoughts about this? Great, great. So, I mean, I, um, I have read Pindar's um uh, query and and I think it probably has been sufficiently answered with the discussion on the mailing list, um, you know, from John Curran and others. I think personally think that Pinder was a bit confused about the role of the arbitration um, because I think he had in mind about issue you know, about the arbitration panel use in the UDRP for domain names dispute. So I think there was some level of confusion there, which I think Pinder has acknowledged in his email. But just from our perspective, um, you know, arbitration for us is important because we want to take it out of the, the jurisdiction of the court of a particular country. Um, and arbitration is like a private international law. So we are interested uh, in using arbitration really to, to just remove a country from actually, and a country's law from operating too much to affect any contract. But again, I'm going into too much detail. So, but I think bottom line is I don't feel like that we need to respond any more to, to that uh, question because I think that question already has been answered and, and I think answer to pin the satisfaction on the mailing list. That's my personal opinion. Thank you, Craig. Um, I do agree with your observation about the first point, actually. But then for the second point, I'm not seeing um, the, the second point is the point that I've raised um, as F. So on the first point, E, um, to get some data point about um, the past arbitration cases, yes, I think John Curran has answered. And then to John's response, he actually further asked, hey, if there's no uh, any arbitration cases in the past, then how can we be sure and uh, know that this arbitration uh, system works? Because if there's uh, no particular experience, how do we know that this system is good? That that seems to be um, this, uh, the question that uh, Pinder has raised and uh, nobody has answered. Right. Perhaps I shouldn't should answer that. I mean, you know, as a lawyer, um, arbitration is used all the time, especially in... Uh, international contracts. I use them all the time. Um, and really, it's a much faster system than, than, than going through the court and relying on the court. Um, and a, a lot faster, a lot simpler. So that's the reason. Should I perhaps respond to that? Yes, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. So if you don't mind, uh, maybe you can clarify this point to Pinda. And then I think he didn't have a very, very serious uh, issue about this. So as long as you clarify, then I, I get the impression that it, it will be okay for him. And and, and then, um, so going back to the point on um, E, well, he, he actually raised a question. Um, thank you, Craig, for agreeing to reply to Pinda. And then, so I going back to his point about um, E, is that um, he was asking if there's, um, what were the cases that used, um, we, we experienced any dispute between ICANN, Vogue, and the RIR about the global approval of the uh, global process. And I think um, John Curran has already replied. And then he was, um, he, he was saying whether it's worth actually stating that they haven't had, we haven't had any arbitration cases um, as a point to uh, strengthen that we, our, our scheme is strong and um, and we haven't had any uh, concern or specific issues related to this. So he was just wondering if it's worth mentioning it in our document or not. So do people have any comments about this? I don't have a strong preference either way, actually. Okay. 
Okay, I'm not hear, hearing any comments from anybody, so I think I'm assuming that everybody feels a uh, similar way. Um, so would anybody feel concerned if we reflect this point in, in our text? Um, I'm not hearing any concerns, so well, it might be okay for us to uh, try to draft the text. Um, uh, if we, um, given that we will not uh, uh, have, uh, we will have enough time to address this uh, compared to other higher priority issues. So now let's tentatively list this as uh, we will draft this uh, text uh, as a part of uh, our document. Uh, but. Uh, it's not a high priority, so um, perhaps we can drop it if we have more issues that we want to focus. Oh, Narani is saying that I, you, you're not concerned about including it, but not wondering if this should give more. Yes, I agree with you exactly. Um, so you're wondering if this should be given more priority. Um, and if it improves the document, yes, I, I agree with your point, Nurani. So that's why it's tentatively, yes, I'll put it as a list okay to reflect, but it's not a high priority. See, the bottom up process works. You had silence, and that spoke loudly. Uh, oh, that, that's, that was Paul's uh, comment. And um, Alan, where is the proposed text? Well, there's no proposed text, actually. Nobody's proposing text, and he, he was just suggesting to add this. So um, we can tentatively maybe consider, but uh, uh -huh, Paul, thank you. OK. Got it. Um, so. We, we don't have a proposed text, and I'm also wondering if we should add high pri uh, 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 spend our resources in incorporating this point because I don't I'm not really sure if we need to uh, we have an issue about strengthening strengthening this. So um, yeah, we, we maybe we can still keep it as as an open option, but uh, it's, it's not a it's not a high priority. Nurani, please. Yes, I'm not sure if I have a, a great way forward, but, but it feels like um, this is the very end of the process. And, and because um, I also don't feel like we should only cater to one person's request of adding text into uh, a document if it doesn't have support. I'm not sure if, if a good way forward would be to, to simply throw the question back to the list and say, is there, you know, is there strong support for others to include such a text at this point, or if that's a good way of, of handling it? Uh, obviously, um, if a lot of people feel like this should be included, then we need to listen to that. But my interpretation is that, that um, that this is not this is from one person and and um so maybe seeing if there's support from others is a good way of uh deciding whether or not we should include it excellent point Nurani. I think that's a good way of judging uh, whether we should prioritize this or not so uh to go back to him and ask um not not him but to the list and ask if others support um about this point and uh, I see. Alan, ask the list whether other support is suggestion. And yes, I think that's consistent with Nurani's suggestion. So um, agreed. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I'll follow up on the list about this. Or if anybody wants to volunteer, uh, I'm happy to um, accept volunteers as well. But if there's nobody volunteering, I'll follow up with, um, with Pinda. So I think. Uh, we've covered all the points that need discussions um, on here. So other points is editorial comments. So lack of revision coverage. Actually, I think um, Hermat uh, Hertmet has actually replied already uh, that um, lack of revision coverage should be Latin America and Caribbean. And uh, um, so if 
uh, the LACNIC representative in this first uh, team is comfortable with suggested change. I, maybe we can incorporate this. I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion, and I don't know what the issue would be uh, to keep the South America. But uh, so, would the uh, LACNIC representatives at the call are they still here? Andres, is he, is he still here? Oh, he doesn't seem to be here, so um, maybe I can I'll follow up with him and the LACNIC team representatives. Yes, exactly. So I, I, it's the same. Um, the suggested text change is the same as LACNIC's website. So let's reconfirm, and I'll do that on the list. So we've covered all the issues in five. And then, so um, since we have three minutes left, um, I'll send some text related to preparation for the final draft, and then we can discuss it at the next call, which I'd like to confirm is on the 12th, so it's next Monday, the same time. And then I would also like to, um, oh, I see a comment from Michael. Um, so there's no conflict between Aaron and Lacanic region definitions. Uh, Erin is not North America. Okay, thank you for um, this comment, Michael. And then, um, so going back to 7A, um, it's to reconfirm the uh, schedule of all future Christine calls. So uh, let's see what we have on the list now. And then um, Maybe we can confirm at this point whether we want to add more calls than we've listed here at this stage. So uh, would people be able to uh, see Christine timeline that is posted on the NL webpage? I'm clicking uh, version 1.4, which I believe is the latest one. So the call scheduled is uh, 12, 13, and then 15. Um, Based on our experience, I think it might be safe to also add 14, but uh, although it's going to be every day uh, meeting until we publish this, our draft. Uh, so that's my suggestion, and it's, it's, it might not be a must for everybody to attend uh, all the calls, but I, I would feel more comfortable if we can schedule this and add this. Um, so anybody have any um, any concerns or comments uh, related to adding our uh, 14th as well on the call to be scheduled. Oh, and then I, I, I misunderstood. Um, so it's not the call is not scheduled on the 12th, but the next call scheduled is 13th. So um, At this stage, I would be personally be very comfortable if we have calls um, scheduled at least um, every day next week until we publish the draft because we really never know what kind of issues that uh, we will be having. And then from the past experience, it's, it's usually not so good when we uh, cancel a call or like uh, don't have enough for sufficient calls. So that would put a lot of pressure on you. but. Um, um, thank you, Alan, uh, for agreeing every day seems sensible, and I really have to apologize to NL Secretariat for having to cope up with this uh, frequency. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Paul. Um, so um, I'm not seeing anybody um, um, expressing concern, so let's uh, plan the call every day. So i.e. Um, 12 and including the 15th. So we're going to have the call on the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. So I think that's our, our future call schedule. And then I think we've covered um, all the agenda items that I wanted to cover in the uh, call today. And can we schedule? <laughs> Yeah, I really want to do that, Nirani, actually. I really wanted to have like a, a drinking party where all the Chris team members get together and then have a drink. Um, I don't know where it would be an opportunity, but um, but uh, yeah, I, I really like your comments, actually. So it looks good. And 
Yeah, maybe I, I can, maybe. Uh, I don't know if everybody was here. But um, so I think we're over with the agenda. And um, yeah, Singapore, yes. So um, thank you very much for attending this uh, call. And then thank you to observers as well. So I'd like to adjourn the meeting. And then so the action item that I, I would need to follow up is um, I will respond to Richard and uh, also clarify on uh, to Pinder's point to other uh, others in the uh, mailing list whether people will feel this point should be added and then Craig to uh, uh, reply to uh, Pinder's question. So these are the, uh, the, the actions that uh, resulted from this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, so, Yumi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Govin, and thanks all. So we'll keep in touch online. Yeah, sure.